it's relevant to our daily lives, and, but then makes it spiritually usable to move us in the direction of our destiny. In our lives, we are called to be like Him, like Jesus. This is the first time in a while that I've been sweating coming to the full bit. Usually I am when I leave. But today is the first day that I... Thank you, Pastor Gus. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Worship team, thank you. My life is not just about accumulating things. My purpose is not just about, you know, getting on the front page of Charisma or hosting TVN. The, the goal of our life is to be conformed to His image. Conformity comes with great difficulty. Nothing is conformed without great fire. You don't become in your life just because you step in here on Sundays and Wednesdays. You become because you take this word and you walk it out. And you live it out. And you live it out when it's difficult. And you believe and you hold on to a dream and a passion when other people are not celebrating it with you. And you oftentimes walk a road that other people don't understand you. But you believe and you are, you are embracing what no one else sees. But you are moved not by the present. But you're moved by the very thing that you hear in your life. And God, who is the author, Jesus, who is the promise, and if that was the cast of Christmas, I mean, that is sufficient. But what I love about Matthew and Luke, it tells us that there's Mary, who's the carrier. There's Joseph, who's the protector. And then there's Herod, who is the dream killer. Every step of your life moving in the direction of God's destiny for your life will always be confronted by a Herod. There are Herods all over the place. And they're just waiting for you to take a hold of a dream. Last week we talked just briefly about Mary and how she is a carrier. The angel was sent to her. The angel Gabriel was sent to her. His name means the strength of the Lord. Came to her with a word. In her seeing this great angel, she was not moved by what she saw. She was moved by what she heard. Maybe it was because she had spent time with Elizabeth, whose name means fullness of God. And, and Elizabeth had mentored her on hearing the key to your life is not in your seeing, it's in your hearing. You will always hear it before you see it. Y'all not going to help me this morning, but that's all right. Listen to me. You will always hear it before you see it. When you can hear a thing, what you see becomes even more easily embraceable. And so Mary needed the presence of the angel until she said, Be it unto me according to your word. She prefaced that statement by saying, with God, no rhema is void of the possibility to bring itself to completion. What I love about God's word, it doesn't need my help to bring it to completion. There is something within his word, self-contained, that is able to produce and come to pass. He said, no word that proceeds from me will return unto me void. But the season of that fulfillment is not always my season of fulfillment. Because we want it right now. I want it yesterday. I don't want to wait for anything. We will drive out of our way not to stand in a line or go through anything. We will spend more gas driving to go to a gas station where we don't have to wait. We often have to eat what we don't want just because the place we want to go to has too big of a line. But God speaks. And when we come to the place where we say, God, now, be it unto me according to your word. The angel said immediately, he departed. His job was gone. It was over. He was gone. God is trying to grow us to a place where as carriers of dreams and visions, like Mary, 
God often speaks to us when we're young and not fully grown. We have to walk out and process the thing that we hear God saying. It's never easy. It's often complicated. But I'd rather live a life in obedience than a life in ease. And so as I commit my life to the very thing that I've heard him say before, I move into what I believe to be one of the more significant features or, or key characters in our story. Can I just take a few minutes and remind you of what you've already heard and remind you of what you already knew? I, no, I just want to give you some, just some wisdom, words of wisdom about the thing that has happened in your life. People see, like Mary, many of us have been spoken to at an early age. How many of you in here would be honest and say that God has put something in your life and you haven't seen it fully come to pass yet? Is there anybody here but me? Look, almost all of us in here. God has said something. God has spoken to us and we haven't completely seen it come to pass yet. But yet our lives are a direct reflection of words that have been spoken over us. I am a composite of what I've heard. I am, listen to me, says, I am today a composite of what I heard. That is why you have to commit yourself and submit yourself to words that have the ability to move your life to a place other than where you are. I often am criticized by people that I don't preach to where you are. I'm always trying to preach to where you're going. Well, well Saints, listen to me. If you don't know where you are, you don't need to be here. You need to be in a hospital. Most of us know where we are. Come on, bro. You know how you got here. You don't need to be reminded of the struggle that you had this past week. You know that. I know my weakness. I know my failures. I don't need to be reminded of this. I need somebody that can speak to my seed. And talk to that part of my spirit that has not been spoken to. And if I can speak to that part of your dream today, I will tell you, don't give up on what you've heard. Even when everything around you doesn't seem to be celebrating it. See, preaching and teaching is important because it's God's way of sending a word into your life to defeat a previous word that has or was spoken over your life getting here. Somebody heard coming here sometime this week that you never will and it won't and it can't. But you need to hear this morning's message because it's going to replace a word that tells you you can't and you won't. God gives us blueprints to shape our lives and they become our dreams and they become our visions. Words create an image. Our life becomes that picture. There's a, there's a created image in my spirit man that I have seen constructed by his word. And I'll be honest with you, saints, that's much more important to me than what I see in the natural. Sometimes our dreams and our visions are ridiculed when our dreams are spoken out of season. Be careful not to speak your dream to just anybody because not everybody will celebrate it and rejoice with you. Some are like the other Joseph, the namesake of the Old Testament. I'll tell you, this morning early, I did a comparative study between Joseph of Genesis and the Joseph of Matthew. Both were deep dreamers. Both spent time in Egypt. Both lived their lives based on what they saw and what they heard, not in the ordinary realm. 